Friends, welcome to this, the longest night service, also commonly known as the Blue Christmas Service, for the year of 2020. This service is called the longest night because we are approaching the longest night of the year, the one night that is longer than all the others. And for many, nighttime can be a time of heightened loneliness or fear. And those feelings don't leave us just because we're in the Advent season looking forward to Christmas. So tonight, we welcome you, whenever you're watching this, wherever you're watching this. Know that you are welcome as you are, and that you were loved as a child of God. We see so much merriment and joy in this season, and I wish nothing more than that for you. But in this season, sometimes, even though we can be surrounded by the ones that we love, the ones who cherish us, that we cherish back. Sometimes it brings back memories of those who are not able to be with us in this time, making it a difficult season, whether it be through estrangement, death, illness, isolation from COVID-19. Whatever the reason, this year in particular can be more difficult than all the others that we've known. Christmas is a time when we're supposed to be happy, when we're supposed to be around each other, celebrating with one another, drinking eggnog together and swapping gifts. But there are also those that we know we may never drink eggnog with again, that we may never hold in our arms again. And it's all that love that is pent up within us that now has no place to go this season that can sometimes bring us these feelings of tension, anxiety, loneliness, or sadness sometimes in this season. So this evening, my friends, we gather to honor each other, to honor those who are no longer with us in this season, and to honor the season as what it is, a grand sign of God's love for each of us. Friends, once again, welcome. May we pray. Oh God, be with us this night. We have gathered here this evening because we long for you to come to us, to save us and to comfort us, to bring us peace. As the day draws near when we celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus, we grow in our awareness that we need you. We bring with us our grief, our disappointments, our pain, 
our fears, and the chaos of our world. And we lay all of that before you in this time of worship. As Jesus embodied your love for the world and became God with us, so now this night, we pray that you would come again. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel. Amen. our confession tonight. Holy God, before you our hearts are open, and from you no secrets are hidden. You made us each uniquely and beautifully in our humanity, but we know that in our humanity we are prone to allowing our sin to keep us from you and your love. May we now confess together the things that separate us from you. Holy and gracious God, it is sometimes difficult to be wholehearted in our celebration of your birth. Memories of those we have loved who are not with us consume us as we look out at the joy of life as it moves forward where we're holding onto our albatross the weight of the season's past that is no more, unwilling or unready to let it go, and where we have turned away from you by the grace you have offered, speak to us, where our sadness goes on, where grief still has a claim on us, let us hear your assurance that you are traveling beside us, helping us to carry our burdens and helping us to let in the light of Jesus Christ. Would you pray silently? Lord God, there are times when all we see is the darkness and we may cry out, the Lord God has forsaken me. 
My Lord has forgotten me. But God says to us, I shall never forget you, for I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. By the grace of Christ, we are accepted and loved by God. Amen. Amen. inspired by the scriptures of Job and John chapter 16. Let us pray. Walk with us, our spirits sigh. Lord, please hear our spirits when they feel again our loss, our pain, and when you hear their weary cry. Jesus, take us to your side. Walk with us when the road will bend. Lord, make all our weeping and our wailing end. Wipe away our tears and forgive our fears. Jesus, lift the heavy cross. Talk with us until we behold a joyful life that you unfold. Heal our eyes to see your prize. Jesus, take us into that glorious light. Stay with us until day is done. No tears nor dark shall dim the sun. Cheer the heart. Your grace, Lord, please impart. Jesus, bring eternal life. Amen. The longest night service, as I mentioned earlier, is commonly held on the longest night of the year, when darkness lingers minutes more and we find ourselves within it at the edge of a yearly reminder of the love of God and our own mortality. The air hangs cold, and the trees seem to shiver in the nighttime. The colors of the world have turned grayed and muted. Why does gray always seem to pair with sadness, or death, or things ill? Why the color gray? Why does night demand our attentions to our physical realities, our vulnerabilities, and our pains? Why is it at night we notice more the beating of our hearts and the sound of our breath? How is it that we can be so alone, even though we may be surrounded by a sea of people who love us, who make us smile? How can we connect with God's gracious gift, that we too may be able to reach out. But so many of us carry that albatross around our necks and the weight of it keeps us from reaching out to God. Christmas is a beautiful time and often as we grow, we desire to hold on to the magic that we once felt at its coming. You remember, when you were small, the magic of the Christmas season. Everything seemed better, brighter. There was this sense of anticipation. And we, tra we chased that thrill of warm cookies and cold milk and singing and, and snowflakes and family. But as we grow, we see life change. We see loved ones in pictures now, but no longer in front of us. And we hold on to those memories. But as we hold on to those memories, perhaps we feel at the same time that we have lost a sense of that spirit that we once knew. 
Annual celebrations have a strange power over us. They cause us to reflect, to remember, to dream, and to yearn for what once was the best times of our lives. And we reminisce, and the reminiscing is fun. But it can also remind us of who we miss, of that love that was pent up within us with no place to be put anymore. And winter's chill reminds us that we are only here for a season. We must remember we are only here for a season, for we too will fade as the flowers fade and join with the earth once more. But we are also given a gift this season, the gift of the Christ child that says, yes, winter is only a season, but at the close of this season, we will truly enter the beginning of our life with God. It is this that we hold to as we approach this service, that this is a time of hope, of light in the darkness. My grandfather passed away on Christmas in 2011. I was 21 years old. He lived in Mount Horeb, Wisconsin, where every year the snow fell thick across the rolling land. And he loved to see the morning, the way that it draped itself fresh across the world, creating a sparkling beauty, just like a bride in her gown. Grandpa, he loved the first snowfall. And so on Christmas, we read The First Snowfall by James Russell Lowell. And we read it at his funeral, at his graveside, standing there in the first snowfall of Wisconsin on Christmas Eve. So I'd like to share this with you now. The snow had begun in the gloaming, and busily all the night had been heaping field and highway with a silence deep and white. Every pine and fir and hemlock wore ermine too dear for an earl and the poorest twig on the elm tree was ridged inch deep with pearl. From sheds new roofed with Carrera came Chanticleer's muffled crow. The stiff rails were softened to swan's down and still fluttered down the snow. I stood and watched by the window the noiseless work of the sky and the sudden flurries of snowbirds like brown leaves whirling by. I thought of a mound in sweet Auburn, where a little headstone stood, how the flakes were folding it gently, as did robins, the babes in the wood. Up spoke our own little Mabel, saying, Father, who makes it snow? And I told of the good All-Father, who cares for us here below. Again I looked at the snowfall, and thought of the leaden sky, that arched o'er our first great sorrow, when that mound was heaped so high. I remembered the gradual patience that fell from that cloud-like snow, flake by flake, healing and hiding the scar of our deep plunged woe. And again to the child I whispered, the snow that husheth all, darling, the merciful father alone can make it fall. Then with eyes that saw not, I kissed her, and she, kissing back, could not know that my kiss was given to her sister, folded close under deepening snow. That we have been blessed to know great love here, and we cherish those moments. We also know that the passing of time as it grips us fades away every year. It is okay to look upon the things that give us sadness. It is okay to feel the weight of living. I'd like to end our meditation today with a poem from Mary Oliver called In Blackwater Woods. Look, the trees are turning their own bodies into pillars of light, are giving off the rich fragrance of a cinnamon and fulfillment. The long tapers of cattails are bursting and floating away over the blue shoulders of the ponds, and every pond 
no matter what its name is, is nameless now. Every year, everything I have ever learned in my lifetime leads back to this, the fires in the black river of loss, whose other side is salvation, whose meaning none of us will ever know. To live in this world, you must be able to do three things, to love what is mortal, to hold it against your bones, knowing your own life depends on it, and when the time comes, to let it go. Let it go. Friends, tonight we invite you, wherever you may be, to light a candle in memory of someone in a time of prayer or as a sign of hope. It is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. So friends, join us now. Whether you light a candle for a loved one gone, a loved one you miss, or for the Christ child himself, we invite you. Once again, may we pray. On this day, we await the coming of Christ. We long for the light of his presence with us and in us. When our souls are deeply troubled and our hearts break with the weight of sorrow, may our grief be seasoned with love and may our sorrow be buoyed by hope. In our times of God-forsakenness and estrangement, may we gaze on the innocent one, the Christ, made perfect through suffering, and see him in our vulnerable God, who saves in weakness and in pain. Christ, the infinite depths of God's grace. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is the light of the world, the light that no darkness can overcome. So friends, go now in peace, 
knowing that the God whose love created this world sent Jesus Christ into the same world to be our friend, companion, and savior. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could never put it out. In love and in peace, may you be blessed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, this night and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.